first off, how's how are you both doing? How's everyone doing? Fantastic, sir. How about yourself? Very good. I'm doing all right. Doing all right so far. It's been a tiring day, but you know, making way through. Um, so first thing I wanted to ask is uh, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero is a prequel, and it sort of gives us a glimpse at the sort of complicated relationship between Satoru Gojo and Suguru Geto before the events of the series. So I wanted to ask, did that provide a unique opportunity to sort of explore that character dynamic in that time period? Yeah, yeah, I would say absolutely. Um, if you watch the uh, the first season, you know, there was not too much made of the past history between these two characters, Suguru and right, uh, right. Um, uh, Gojo. And and the, the history and the relationship is one that is very complex, very fleshed out and very um, uh, integral to the the story points that happen throughout the series you know uh, gato is such a, a huge player in, in the storyline and that it, it's really nice for the audience to be able to sort of peek in and see where all of that sort of stems from where that originates from um i know the show will probably get even more into uh into into it in depth later on but but for now this is sort of like the first peak for people who only watch the anime to really see like what what is up with these two characters so that was really nice yeah 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 right yeah. I agree completely. Yeah, that summed it up perfectly. Awesome. Um, for you, Lex, uh, without any spoilers or anything of that nature, how did it feel to portray Suguru Geto at this point in the character's existence? Like, how did that feel compared to the, the Geto that we see in main series? Yeah, well, he's definitely got a lot more life to him. And he has, you know, you can see because of some flashbacks you can see the these kind of the process and the arc that his character has gone through you can see the different like points of where where he had to where he didn't have to but he pivoted in in terms of his idealism and and uh you know how how he looked at life in general and, and this movie does a real good job of like throwing out little um little bits of information that that uh kind of outline that very well. Right. And you kind of do get to see like glimpses of that because it's such a, it's an earlier time period for him. So you get to see like things coming together a bit more with that character. Well, he was more compassionate, you know, early on in his life. And he, he really wanted to stand for humanity. You know, he really wanted to protect humanity. And right. then because he was disappointed, you know, he, he lost his faith in humanity and he eventually became sort of bitter because of it. And um, I think you can see that that progression in the movie as well. Yeah. It's hard to talk about that subject because the thing that happens to him is a huge spoiler. Right. So That's why I was kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You just want to talk around it every time. It's like, and something yeah. happens. Yeah. Happens. Yeah. yeah. Something happens that lets him down severely. Yeah. So, yeah. Something happens and then this thing happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in um, Takeji for this one. Um, uh, Gojo is someone who's pretty firmly established at the start of Jujutsu Kaisen with his motives, with him leading the students and things of that nature. Um, did that make it an easier transition to portray the character in the prequel film? So that way you can just like, since he's already kind of established in his role, you could just automatically just go right into it basically. Yeah, that was nice. And you know, it's the timeline between the film and the series is not that many years at all. It's a very no. short amount of time. So uh, the Gojo we see in the series is very close. I mean, I mean, the blindfold aside, you know, he's trying, still trying to find his fashion sense back then. Um, <laughs> but the blindfold aside, uh, he's very already very much comfortable in his position as this this teacher for Jujutsu High. He's very, um, he's very uh, much a self-realized person as much as a self-realized person as Gojo can be, you know? Um, right. He's very comfortable with himself. He's very comfortable with his uh, manner He's very comfortable with his position in life. So yeah, um, the Gojo we see in both uh, the movie and the series is, you know, Gojo is this character who's had this very um, uh, uh, um, consistent sort of personality and, uh, and ideology, uh, even from a little kid, because, you know, he's born with all this privilege and power. Um, he's never really had to change. So that that melts into a little bit uh, of, of your question where it's like, you know, it's just the it's just a continuation of this childlike personality uh, as an adult. And we see it just sort of manifest into this, not stable, but like, you know, a complete picture of who he is. And it's very, I think it's very well represented in both the, the series and the movie. 
Right. And to expand on that, and this goes for both of you, um, did your work on the main series influence your performance in the prequel at all? Were you able to take some of knowing like where their stories were going to go? Were you able to take some of that and apply that kind of retroactively, basically? Let's see. That's a good question. Um, I think for me, it was such a dramatic difference in where he lives, let's say, um, right. it, that it, it, I really didn't have to apply anything from the series going backwards to this. It was more about discovering what was new about the character in the, in the prequel. Yeah. It, it, some of the new stuff that uh, I, I was going through was uh, specifically for um, uh, the Suguru character, because, you know, like I mentioned, we, we never really got to touch on that in the s- series. So whenever right. Suguru comes around in the movie, there's always this very somber, dark kind of like energy Gojo has. And you can sort of um, really kind of explore his emotional relationship with this other person. And that was something that was completely missing when I was doing the character during the show. So that was something that mm-hmm. uh, I really appreciate getting to, you know, sort of touch on. Right. A whole different like perspective, yeah. so to speak, of that character. Yeah, for sure. Right. Um, This is something of, um, I don't know how this would affect you in the booth when it comes to this sort of thing, but did the movie's performance in Japan add any sort of pressure to your performance in a way because of, you know, it being the highest um, grossing film in Japan in 2021, one of the highest grossing anime movies of all time in Japan. Did that sort of add a sense of, you know, like I said, a sense of pressure, any added sort of, I got to bang this out of the park sort of thing, going into it, knowing that this movie was held to such a high esteem. I knew a little bit about that before we recorded it, and it added a certain sense of excitement. Um, I, I don't think it added any pressure necessarily. I felt like privileged and, and, you know, blessed to have the opportunity to be playing the character. So there was that kind of excitement of wanting to do my best. Right. Um, but as far as pressure goes, I don't think I felt more pressured necessarily. Yeah. I, I think um, like, I think I said this before, but like maybe when I, if, if I was like just started in voice acting where I've been doing voice acting for like two years and I booked this role. Yeah. I probably would have, you know, been crushed under the pressure a little bit more, but uh, right. you know, I've have, I've had the uh, uh, privilege of doing this for about 15 years now. So whenever Lex and I, I, I imagine jump into a booth for any project, it's, it's, you know, it's business as usual. You get there, you, you do the job and you leave. Um, but it, it, I, I did know about the movie's performance and I was really excited about it. Um, I thought it was so cool that, you know, these, these anime movies have just been smashing records over and over. First we had Mugen Train, now uh, JJK Zero. It's, it's just, it's been a spectacular year for anime movies. I mean, not year, I'm sorry, a a spectacular couple of years for anime movies. So yeah, it was, it was exciting. Um, uh, But yeah, I agree. I don't think it was any more like Mm pressure-y. That makes sense. Right. Um, Since you mentioned, obviously both of you have been, you know, working together, working for so long. Um, Both of you have worked together in the past on different projects and given working in the past and now where you are with this uh, particular project, did that, sort of history between you both lend itself to an added sense of chemistry in the booth when it came to the characters did, did, what it, did it allow you to feed off of each other better when it came to the performances i think inadvertently it did um i, I wasn't like conscious of what KG was doing necessarily like, Oh, this is KG in the booth. I, I got to just have right. our chemistry or whatever, you know, but I think, you know, KG a fantastic actor. And so whenever I had a chance to listen to what he had done as part of my, you know, dialogue, cause we work alone when we're doing four, right. we're in the booth alone. So every once and in a while, flaps, get, yeah. yeah, you get to hear the other actor if they've recorded before you every once in a while, it doesn't right. happen too often, but whenever I did, it was like, Oh, great. You know, I got a lot to go from, you know? So, in that sense, yeah, you know, we, we've we've done a few things now where we've either been rivals or friends and rivals or, or the combination of both. You know, I was saying to KG earlier, like the Lang Tang duo is back. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he, yeah. Um, so, uh, KG, anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, look, I was, I, was, I just want to say, like, uh, I, I've been, I've been a fan of Lex's since I was like younger. You know what I mean? So anytime I get to work with Lex on anything, it's, it's, it's a, it's a real treat. So oh, thank you. Yeah. Of course, man. Awesome. We, we have a, we have a mutual admiration society that we got going on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, I've been given the cue to wrap up. Oh. I just wanted to say thank you both for your time and mm-hmm. thank you for this interview. Oh, thank you, Lauren. Of course. Of course.